It's the follow-up episode. So in this video, I wanna talk about why you need an enclosure, go into my design a little bit, show you the things that I would have done differently, and then also show you some future things that I'm planning on. So let's do it. So I don't wanna clickbait you, so I'm gonna jump right into the reasons you need an enclosure if you've got one of these CNC milling machines, especially if you're running flood coolant. Number one, you got safety. So I built this with safety in mind, or that was the primary reason, and safety, for me at the time was strictly just, I don't want parts and coolant and stuff flying at me all the time, which is super valid, still the number one reason for safety. Uh, I made it with quarter inch um, polycarbonate and granted, I know that's not gonna stop like a huge chunk of steel coming out at me, but it might slow it down and it'll definitely keep a lot of the smaller stuff coming at me. So it's a vast improvement compared to either nothing or the shower curtain. So number two in regards to safety, would be the coolant smell. This garage used to just smell pretty strongly of coolant all the time. And I didn't really think anything of it, like yeah, the coolant smells a little bit, no big deal. But that now that I've got this enclosure on here, I will open up the doors to do a parts change or a tool change or whatever, and it like hits you. So I try to limit you know, exposure to all these different chemicals and everything. And what I realized was, yeah, it was a little more faint because it wasn't as confined before, but I was 100% of the time while I was out here breathing that stuff in. At least now when I open it up, um, I just get hit with it once, close it up, limit my exposure, and then I know as everything cools down, the, the coolant condenses and everything, and it kind of all runs back down into the drain pan. But I've also heard other folks have like air filtration systems and stuff. So I might look into something like that in the future, just so that when I open up the doors, I don't get a waft of coolant vapor, but I didn't even think about that. And I think that's huge, especially if you're going to be doing this five days a week, eight hours a day, it's, it's not good to be breathing that stuff in. So that's my safety spiel. So number two reason coolant control, that was, Honestly, probably the driving factor. Yeah, being a little bit safer was definitely a bonus and probably tipped me over the edge, but having coolant everywhere in my garage was driving me crazy. And the shower curtain did okay, but there was just times where, especially with the way the Tormach is built, that the table actually overhangs the base a little bit, so it is able to rub. And if you're doing a lot of x-axis motions, it can open up your, your, um, your shower curtain, and then after that, you're screwed. And so it's okay if you're out here and you notice it, but if you're running you know, a bunch of stuff and you're in the house eating your dinner and you come out, then you got a big mess on your hands. So that sucked. Um, additionally, I didn't have anything covering the top, so I ended up getting coolant on my ceiling. Um, that's no fun. Um, it just seemed like all the time there was at some point coolant coming out of that thing. Another one I didn't even think about, number three, is noise. Uh, I'm used to this thing running and to be honest, I didn't really notice the difference when I got the enclosure, um, but it, at the same time, the whole machine just feels different with the enclosure. So I didn't really notice the noise until I actually opened the doors while it was running to just, I think, to move the coolant nozzle a little bit. And I got hit with that extra noise and I was like, holy cow, that's what I've been hearing all the time up until now. And so I've noticed that I can actually run this thing. and. Sometimes I think at one point a few weeks ago that the machine was running and I walked away from it and started recording. And yeah, you can hear it in the background and everything, but it's not crazy loud anymore, which that's a huge bonus for my own sanity. Let's do this design overview. So as you can probably see from just looking at it, even from back here, uh, I'm sorry, now you get to see the real garage where it's all messy and stuff. My nice Coke can there. No, I'm not sponsored. Um, now nah, I lost my train of thought. Here we go. So you can see that it's a frame and then I've used, that's aluminum sheet that's painted on one side as the panels, and then polycarbonate doors. And the idea is that the frame is kind of your main structure, so you can tie your doors into it if you need to hang you know, tool racks or anything like that. You can do all that off of that, that frame, and that's one by one aluminum for the most part. And then like up here for my header, I used a piece that I had laying around. That's like eighth by, I don't know, two and a half or something. Yeah, so it's basically just a big frame. 
Oh, and then the other detail on the frame, as you can see, like right there. And then down on the bottom, it's kind of covered. You can see them on the outside a little better. Like right here. I went ahead and made this thing so that it'll come apart. And that helped me with installation. And then it'll help me if I ever have to move it. So basically what you can do is the panels are just screwed in. So just take the panels out, take the roof off. The roof is all sheet metal. And then um, you can take the back half of the frame off and then the front half, and then you can lift the base frame portion off. So it comes off in three big chunks and it'll sit somewhat flat. And then, yeah, you've got everything ready to move. So otherwise, the only way I know to get this thing on and off would be to take it out in my driveway where I have enough ceiling height and lift it over the mill. And that would be a chore. So a few pros and cons to this approach. Um, number one, I chose the frame because it was something that I was super confident, like working with one inch angle, it's pretty simple. I just bust out the MIG welder. And for the most part, you can build just about anything you want out of it. It's pretty easy, it's cheap. Yeah, and I figured it would be a low risk way to get some type of a structure up here for me. I don't have a lot of experience or really any experience with sheet metal. And so anything that I did with sheet metal would be a learning experience. So I figured the frame, if everything else went to crap on this project, I'd still have a frame that I could hang some type of material from, even if it's shower curtain, but at least I'd have something. Um, if I bought a bunch of just sheet metal at the time and you know, something didn't work out about the wrong thickness, I wasn't able to bend it, like all these different things, or even just how I designed it wasn't quite working out because I never really worked with sheet metal, like I just said. Um, I was afraid that the whole project would just be a failure completely and I'd be out, you know, all that, all that material and still have no enclosure. So I went with the lower risk approach for me and that was to build it with a frame. And the other thing I guess to tack onto that is that when you look online, the majority of the DIY um, enclosures are made with some type of frame. A lot of them are like 80-20 or you know, aluminum extrusion or, or something to that effect. But a lot of that stuff's high dollar stuff. This one by one angle is super cheap. So the cons of doing it this way is number one, this frame took forever to build. Like I didn't realize it at the time as I was working it, but once I got done with the frame and started cutting and, and even bending the aluminum without a bender, like that stuff went so much quicker than building the frame. It was a lot of cut, weld, grind, and repeat. So it just took a long time and it was tricky keeping everything square. And, you know, and then you've got a bunch of hot rolled, rusty looking steel. So then you got to paint it all and, you know, it, it's just, it took a lot of effort to build that frame for sure. And then once I got into the sheet metal and it was like, man, I just cut this stuff with a, um, an electric snip and drill some holes in it. It drills nice and quick. Like that was when the project sped way up. It was like, man, I can build stuff a lot quicker with this. So that's probably the biggest con of doing it this way. And if you're looking to build an enclosure, which probably you are if you're watching this video, is that you could use like the 80-20 and solve a lot of the issues with the frame. Um, just because everything's made kind of like a kit, but then you just gotta pay a little bit more for that convenience. The other con with this setup here is that instead of doing bends, cause I didn't want to plan on doing bends without a, a sheet metal bender, is that there's a ton of seams, especially in the corners. And so we all know seams lead to leaks. So if I would have just, you know, taken the risk and done all sheet metal, I could have done a lot more like overlaps and flanges and that sort of thing to try and uh, not have all these seams and not have them just butt into each other with a gap or you know or no material behind it lastly again with the sheet metal on this one the last con i've got is that since most of these panels are just flat and just screwed onto the frame um, it leaves a lot of um, rigidity issues in the aluminum so if i walk over here and just um and kind of push against it, the sheet metal will actually flop. I don't know, you probably won't see it, but you'll hear it. And so if that sheet metal was bent on all sides, it probably would be rigid enough, or you know, you can even take it another step further and stamp sheet metal, and that makes it really rigid. And so if I would have done this all out of sheet metal, the sheet metal itself would have probably been a lot stronger. So overall, that's how I designed this thing. That's the pros and cons and everything and overview. 
let's talk about some of the things that I would have done differently. So I'm still on the fence on if I would have done the frame. Um, I'd like to think, especially now that I've worked with the aluminum a little bit, that I wouldn't need the frame and I could have pulled it off without it. Um, but even if I had the frame, I think I should have invested in a bender or had some of these pieces just bent and paid to have it done so that I could get all those corners to have like overlaps. Because if I could have had somebody just bend like a one inch, like say like the side panel over here, just bend a one inch flange going, you know, that direction to overlap with that seam and then do the same thing over here on that seam, it pretty much would have taken care of all your all the corners. I think the only other major design thing I would have done differently is I would have offset my door. So it would have been kind of weird. Um, it's centered right now. So these two sides are the same width and that means the doors are the same width and the doors open the same amount and everything's happy. But if I would have made the left side a little bit longer and the right side a little shorter, like yes, the doors would be kind of wonky because the right side door would also be shorter and the left side door would be longer, but it would have centered the opening on the mill and that might have helped for reaching things. So I don't know, at the same time, while I think about it with the um, stepper motor and this whole table right here, kind of off to the side, maybe it's a good thing that I've got a little more room to, to clean and everything. But it does look a little wonky when you're looking at it from far away because the mill is not centered in the enclosure. All right, so fixes <laughs> and leaks. It's pretty much every fix I have is because of a leak. Um, number one, first day out, a good amount of it was leaking in between this seam. It's between this bottom panel and this, um, the frame piece here. So it's actually kind of seems like it's gotten a little better. I don't know if just some coolant kind of dried up in there and it's, it's kind of sealing itself, but um, definitely want to fix that leak. And then the other spot, which I didn't have a leak right away, but on the last part I made it was leaking, was down here. Yeah, it's actually my finger just got a little wet right there in that corner. So that's kind of an issue that I kind of saw coming and I'm not quite sure how I want to fix it yet. But one thought is just to put some of the flex seal like four inch wide tape all the way down the seams. Another thought is to buy like some two inch by two inch flashing for each one of these corners. Um, I'm kind of leaning that direction. The reason I'm kind of avoiding using like sealant on these is because the aluminum's so thin that you can probably see me moving it right now. And yeah, especially down there. And I'm afraid that um, with the vibrations of the machine, it's just gonna break the seal between the silicone and the metal and it's not gonna do anything. So there's one more big leak that I think it's actually one of the worst leaks I've got. Um, and it comes from these doors. I didn't think this gap right here would be a big deal. It's only enough to barely fit my finger under but when coolant starts splashing this direction a lot of times it'll hit like you know somewhere over here on the pan and it actually splashes right up and out so that's probably the worst so far and a lot of times i don't even notice it but then i'll look down at the ground and there's all these little tiny you know drops of of coolant everywhere so one one thing that i'm thinking about doing is adding onto these doors and basically using the shape of these making it come down and all the way over here and drop off. And that way the door, like that would solve the problem with um, coolant splashing up because the door would go all the way down. And that would also solve, at least where the door opening is, the problem of coolant coming out in between the seam here. And then my next thought was if I added a support brace, like right underneath this beam and tied it in here, I could actually cut out this whole base part because whenever it's running, the doors will be closed and they'll be all the way down to here anyway. So that's really all the fixes I have planned. Really it'll be, you know, adding something to the doors and then maybe some type of flashing or um, sealant in the corners. But other than that, I mean, it's working pretty darn good. So future projects, as you can see, I've got my, uh, my operator little console just sitting on my toolbox. I want to do the um, like Tormach style mount that comes out of the base um, and it's just like a pole that comes up here and then you mount your your stuff up here. So those look fairly easy to make. I'll probably just make my own and get that out of there. So that's the last really big project. The only other thing I've got 
kind of in my mind is I want to move an e-stop or add an e-stop somewhere over to this operator's console that doesn't exist yet, as well as like maybe some, you know, tool holders and, you know, somewhere that I can um, keep like my air nozzle and my vice um, handle, like all that stuff that just you want in arm's reach because you're using it all the time. But yeah, that's all kind of just, you know, little stuff here and there. But other than that, she's running pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty excited and, and yeah, um, can't believe I ever got along without it, to be honest. So if you're running a Tormach without an enclosure, and especially if you're running coolant, like flood coolant, you need an enclosure, trust me. But that is it for this week. Uh, I will see you next time.